The purpose of this presentation is to provide the viewer with a basic understanding of mechanical collection methods used to control air pollution and control devices under this category. We will cover what are mechanical collectors or cyclones? What is mechanical collection? The two common types of cyclones and their design and components. Proper operating conditions. Causes of decreased performance. Performance monitoring. Cyclone collectors use inertial forces to separate particles from a rotating gas stream. They may be used separately or as pre-cleaners before the gas stream enters a more efficient control device, such as a fabric filter or an electrostatic precipitator. The two main types are large diameter cyclones and small diameter multi-cyclones. Large diameter cyclones are used for the collection of large particles that would otherwise settle out near the source. They can achieve efficiencies greater than 90 percent on particles larger than about 20 to 30 micrometers in diameter. Multi-cyclone collectors are groups of small diameter cyclones that have better particle collection capabilities than large diameter cyclones. They can achieve efficiencies greater than 90 percent on particles as small as 5 micrometers. Large diameter cyclones are usually several feet in diameter and consist of a constant diameter upper section referred to as the barrel and a tapering lower section referred to as the cone. In most large diameter cyclones the gas stream enters tangentially at the top of the barrel section. This tangential entry causes the gas stream to rotate as it moves through the barrel and cone sections with the rate of rotation increasing in the cone. Near the bottom of the cone section, the downward direction of the airflow changes and it forms an inner rotation that moves up the center of the outer rotation and out the exit tube at the top of the barrel section. This exit tube extends into the barrel section to a level below the tangential entry in order to prevent direct discharge of the entering gases. Separation of the particles from the gas stream takes place during the outer rotation. Inertial forces imparted to the particles cause them to move to the wall of the cyclone. Since the gas stream velocity is very low near the wall, gravity causes the particles to move down the wall and out the bottom of the cone section. Additional separation occurs as the gas stream reverses direction near the bottom of the cone and moves upward and out of the exit tube. Particles exiting the cone section are usually collected in a hopper before being removed for disposal. Small diameter cyclones are typically 6 to 12 inches in diameter and, like large diameter cyclones, consist of a constant diameter upper section and a tapering lower section. Particle separation occurs in the same manner as in large diameter cyclones, but because of the smaller radius of rotation, greater forces are imparted and smaller particles can be separated. However, because of the small size, several cyclones must be used in a single collector in order to handle a significant air volume. A small multi-cyclone collector may have as few as 16 cyclones, while a large unit may have several hundred. Multi-cyclone collectors are divided into three areas by metal plates referred to as tube sheets. The dirty gas stream enters the collector between these two tube sheets. The lower or dirty gas tube sheet separates the inlet gas stream from the lower casing and hopper area of the collector. The cyclones are mounted in holes in this tube sheet and extend into the lower casing. 
Particles exiting the individual cyclones are collected in a common hopper section below the lower casing before being removed for disposal. The upper or clean gas tube sheet separates the inlet gas stream from the treated outlet gas stream. This tube sheet stair steps downward from the inlet or slopes at about a 45 degree angle in order to help evenly distribute the airflow into each row of cyclones. The exit tubes from each of the cyclones extend through the area of the entering gas stream and discharge through the upper tube sheet. The gas stream entering the multi-cyclone collector turns 90 degrees downward and enters the individual cyclones through the annular space between the body and the exit tube. Turning vanes are mounted in this annular space in order to impart rotation to the entering gas stream. In some designs, turning vanes are also mounted at the entrance of the exit pipe. As with the larger diameter cyclones, the exit pipes extend into the upper body of the cyclone to prevent direct discharge of the entering gases. To review, the two common types of mechanical collectors or cyclones are large diameter cyclones, small diameter multi-cyclones. There are several factors that can contribute to loss of performance in a cyclone collector. These problems include air infiltration, hopper overflow, high or low gas flow rate, plugged turning vanes, eroded turning vanes, eroded exit tubes, tube sheet leaks, cross hopper recirculation. The ability to evaluate potential problems during a field inspection will depend on how well the system is instrumented. Unfortunately, most cyclone systems are not well instrumented. Performance evaluation of these systems will be difficult unless measurements of important parameters are made. There should be two goals in any field inspection. First is to evaluate the source's compliance with any rule-specific monitoring requirements and with the provisions of the Title V permit. In addition, parameters that influence performance should be evaluated to see if there are shifts from their baseline values that could indicate reduced collection efficiency. A potential direct indicator of cyclone performance is the opacity of the discharge gas stream. A modest increase in average opacity from the baseline value provides an early indication of developing problems. A severe increase in average opacity is usually caused by reentrainment of particles from an overflowing hopper. However, this parameter will only be useful for collectors that are designed to remove small diameter particles. Large diameter particles exhibit very little opacity even at high concentrations. For systems that handle large particles, a better direct indicator of performance is particle fallout in the vicinity of the cyclone discharge. One of the most useful parameters for evaluating cyclone performance is the pressure drop across the collector. Increased pressure drop can occur because of plugged turning vanes or plugged exit tubes. Both of these conditions will result in a distortion of the rotation pattern, reducing the collection efficiency. Decreased pressure drop can occur because of eroded turning vanes, eroded exit tubes, or leaks in the upper tube sheet. Eroded turning vanes also distort the rotation pattern, reducing collection efficiency, while eroded exit tubes and leaks in the upper tube sheet allow for the direct discharge of untreated gases. In multi-cyclone collectors, decreased pressure drop can occur from air infiltration in areas below the lower tube sheet. This entering air flows into the bottom of the cyclones and training particles into the exiting gas stream. Changes in gas flow rate can also affect the pressure drop across the collector. Increased gas flow rate will increase the pressure drop and may cause larger particles to strike the walls of the cyclone with so much force that they bounce back into the gas stream and are eventually carried out with the exiting gas stream. Decreased gas flow rate will decrease the pressure drop. Since lower forces will be imparted to the particles, the collection efficiency will also be reduced.
On hot gas streams, the inlet and outlet gas temperatures can be used to evaluate air infiltration into collectors under negative pressure. A significant drop in temperature across the collector indicates that colder outside air is leaking into the device. Excessive air infiltration will result in decreased gas flow rate from the source and will be accompanied by fugitive emissions and decreased hood static pressures. Air infiltration into large diameter cyclones may also reduce the collection efficiency by distorting the rotation pattern and re-entrainment of collected particles may occur with air infiltration below the lower tube sheet of multi-cyclones or through the solids discharge valve of any cyclone. The inspector should also be aware of a design problem that can lead to increased emissions. The problem is referred to as crosshopper recirculation. In very long multi-cyclone collectors there is a significant difference in the lengths of the exit tubes at the front and back of the collector. Since the longer exit tubes will have a greater flow resistance, air may flow out of the solids discharge of the front cyclones and into the bottom of the back cyclones, entraining particles into the exiting gas stream. Finally, the physical condition of the collector should be evaluated. Holes in the casing can result in fugitive emissions in collectors under positive pressure or air infiltration in collectors under negative pressure. Dents in the casing of large diameter cyclones may distort the rotation pattern, reducing the collection efficiency. In determining if a mechanical collector or cyclone system is working efficiently, field personnel should observe, if possible, visible emissions, dust fallout, inlet and outlet temperature, indications of air infiltration, changes in pressure drop, indications of gas flow rate changes. The inspector should always be aware of the air pollution sources need to be in compliance with applicable rules and to observe the source's records and the control device's physical condition. Cyclone systems have many safety considerations including confined space hazards, hot surfaces. Field personnel should never enter the inside of a cyclone device. This type of equipment has legally specified methods for confined space entry under OSHA Rule 29 CFR 1910.146. Further training and experience will be necessary to complete all field tasks safely.